Hello, people of the internet! My name is Johnny. Welcome back to yet another fantastic FNAF news video. Hope you're doing well. Admittedly, this is going to be a pretty small FNAF news video because we've had so much going on. We gotta have a dry period at some point. With all the Help Wanted 2 news happening, as well as that second trailer for the upcoming FNAF movie. Which, by the way, I did never do a proper analysis for that. Do you guys still want to see that? Because it's been about, like, two weeks now. I don't know if you guys would still be interested. But even though it's been pretty slow with FNAF news recently, that doesn't mean we don't have anything to talk about. We got a whole bunch of updates coming from Funko as well as U2's a brand new look at the upcoming FNAF movie. A lot of updates on the PopGo series, that and so, so much more. So if you're excited for this FNAF news video, scroll down, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on any more future FNAF news. And let's kick this video off by talking about a brand new book and that is the Glow in the Dark coloring book. Back in 2021, we got this bad boy, the official FNAF coloring book. And pretty soon we're going to have a second coloring book, though as you can see from the cover the interesting thing about this one is that 24 pages glow in the dark the description goes color in your favorite characters and animatronics from five nights at freddy's in this deluxe coloring book with 24 glow in the dark pages based on the best-selling horror video game series five nights at freddy's this coloring book is packed full of terrifyingly wonderful scenes from the books the comics and the games for fans to color in and enjoy with over 96 total pages of coloring fun featuring the newest characters and animatronics and 24 glow-in-the-dark pages, this book is perfect for any Freddy Fazbear's Pizza super fan. And actually, today we got our first look inside of this glow-in-the-dark coloring book, and the very first page we're actually greeted by Lucky Boy, one of the characters in one of the Fazbear Fright stories. On the next page, we got Classic Bonnie. The next page, it seems like we got Lefty inside of a ball pit. Glamrock Freddy jamming out on the main show stage from Security Breach. And finally, for previews, we've got the Sun and Moon Daycare attendant inside of the daycare. Honestly, some of the new art we're getting here looks absolutely fantastic. I really, really hope there's more representation with Security Breach and, hey, maybe even Ruin? Or who knows, maybe even Help Wanted 2 because that game will be out by the time this book releases because it has a planned release date for August 6th. Jumping over to YouTube's now, you may remember last time we talked about their upcoming Ruin wave of figures. And that wave is going to include Ruined Roxanne Wolf, Ruined Chica, Ruined Monty, the Ruined Eclipse, as well as the Mexus entity who we did get a teaser of previously. And after a lot of fans pushed for it, they did all also reveal that they will be making a figure based on the Mimic. Well, the other day, they gave us the first few sketches of what the Mimic figure was going to look like, asking over on their social media pages which pose people like best, number one, two, or number three. And after a few days of running the poll and adjusting the figure based on feedback from the community, we now got this updated look at the Mimic figure. An absolutely major, major improvement based on the last few sketches we just took a look at. So massive shout out to YouTube's for not only creating such an amazing looking figure, but also listening to the fans. Heck, he's even doing the little arm curl that the Mimic does. Like, that is perfect attention to detail. So I'd love to know what are your thoughts on the Mimic figure, the Mexus entity, and the Ruin wave of figures overall. Though the Mimic is not the only surprise figure that YouTubes will be making because they also revealed in their Discord the other day that Anim Dude, yes, that's right, Anim Dude, Scott Cawthon from FNAF World, will be getting a figure. I do wonder if this is just going to be a one-off figure, or maybe they do plan on doing a full FNAF World wave of figures. Because honestly, there are some pretty interesting and characters from that game that I feel like could make some interesting figures. Characters like Dee Dee or Mendo or heck maybe even Chipper, maybe even Chica's Magic Rainbow. Everyone loves that character. I'm sure everyone would love to have a figure of Chica's Magic Rainbow, but honestly, that'd be pretty cool, you twos. So I'm very curious to see where this is going to go. If they do make a FNAF World wave, will you be picking it up? What characters would you want to see in that wave? Moving right along to Funko, their holiday merchandise is actually already hitting store shelves. Despite the fact that we are halfway through September, here we can see their pop figures now lining the shelves of Hot Topic. Other stores have also started to receive the action figures, even the retail exclusive plushies and the common plushies. And actually, I just checked and all the products are available on Fungo's website right now, so... They're there if you want to pick them up and get into the festive season a bit early this year. Sticking with Funko, we got something revealed to us that was pretty insane, and that is their Security Breach edition of their Something Wild card game. And already from the box art alone, you can see this is some pretty shocking reveals. Not only do we have pop characters based on Security Breach, but like, there's a lot of them. 
and some pretty well-made art of them at that. Not only do you get an actual pocket pop of Glamrock Freddy included with the card game, there's also full art and designs for all the characters in their pop forms like Roxanne, Monty, Chica, The Sun, Vanny, The Moon, DJ Frickin' Music Man, and even Vanessa. And honestly, some of these character designs look frickin' fantastic if I do say so myself. We did get literally just one Security Breach Funko Pop, and that was the Hot Topic exclusive Sun and Moon. And it's interesting here that the Sun and the Moon are separate characters in this card game, so could this be hinting towards Security Breach Pops actually coming soon in the future? That's something that I and I know many of you guys have been absolutely wanting for so, so long at this point because... Let's be honest here, Funko kind of fumbled the bag with the rest of their Security Breach merchandise. The plushies weren't the best, the action figures were pretty hit and miss. At least from what I've seen though, the Snap figures that just got released not too long ago were pretty well received. I've seen a lot of people trying to pick up this pop because it's the only Security Breach pop in a while, so if Funko is really trying to do Security Breach justice now, I think actually going through and making these designs into actual figures is their best possible choice. This card game is also available right now on Funko's website, maybe I'll pick it up to Give you guys a closer look at the designs for these pop figures i'm dying to know what are your thoughts on this do you think we will be getting these as actual figures in the future are you happy with the lineup of characters i know a lot of people are like oh where's gregory where's the blob where's burn trap and now let's make our way over to some fanverse news specifically pop goes because kane carter released a gigantic thread going over some updates on pop goes evergreen and also my pop goes pop goes evergreen has had major developments in the programming side of the main night gameplay pop goes is now fully implemented, including the room reset mechanic and a special new late week mechanic. Blake and Saffron are also maybe 80% implemented using some placeholders in the meantime. Panic does not do much at the moment, but I can technically play through a very bare bones night of Evergreen, which is pretty surreal. But please keep in mind, this does not mean Evergreen is near completion. There is still a ton of stuff to make for the post night gameplay, which is almost like a second entire game. Challenges, dialogue, the in-game currency, and a load of menus. The game isn't coming out soon and a release date isn't even close to being something I can even predict. But just know that we are getting stuff done and all of it is super high quality. We will share more stuff soon, I imagine. Maybe once all five of the animatronics are functional, which at this pace may only take a month. Moving on now to My Pop Goes, which if you don't know is a Pop Goes spin-off game, which is very cute. We did play it here on the channel. Unfortunately, we've had zero updates on when its fanverse inclusion will be officialized or when its Steam page can go live. It has become apparent that Scott Games and co. are extremely preoccupied with FNAF movie stuff, which is understandable. Though even if the Steam page went up today, it'd still take a few months to finish my pop goes, I imagine. The hardest part is probably balancing all the new challenges with all the new characters. We don't expect anyone to play through all combinations, but we need to make sure all of them are possible, and testing that is, quite frankly, exhausting. That being said, it has been lots of fun to work on new unlockable content. As an example, you'll be able to collect character sheets made for Bonnie Glade for her original design and backstories of the Pop Goes gang. And those sheets include some spicy new information, totally inconsequential, but very entertaining. So just some very quick updates on what's happening with the Pop Goes series, both Evergreen and My Pop Goes. And it's not a FNAF news video if we're not ending it by talking about some brand new FNAF movie news. So let's get to that. Like I said previously, not too long ago, we got the second final trailer for the upcoming FNAF movie by Blumhouse. And we're getting dangerously close, dare I say, to the film only being one singular month away. So of course they're trying to market this thing as much as they possibly can with the current strikes going on. And actually we got Total Film releasing an exclusive article with brand new looks of the characters and direct quotes from the director, Emma Tammy. And first up, let's take a look at that brand new look. Here we got Mike as well as Abby looking pretty terrified. A lot of people have pointed out not only are they inside a building as we can tell from the walls, it also looks like some orange lighting is happening in front of them. That's led a lot of people to believe that there is some sort of fire happening in the establishment that they're currently at. Admittedly, it's a little difficult to make out where they're at currently because the background is pretty bland. I've seen some possible theories that this is their house, their apartment, and that's why they're so traumatized looking at it burning down. Though of course this is the FNAF series and a pizzeria getting burnt down, we get like basically every single other year. Moving back to the article itself, we did get a few quotes from the director, Emma Tammy, like I said, and some of them are pretty interesting. We are constantly referencing Steven Spielberg. You know, that childhood wonderment quality. Alongside kind of a darker world that fit akin to Joker. Yeah, you heard that right. The Joker movie <laughs> influenced the FNAF movie. 
what the heck is this timeline? I just said that sentence. Those were some of the cinematography references that Lynn Moncrief and I were pulling. Also, just the haunted house element of it was such a big influence. Some of our scenes that have to do with our main character's backstory and memory were also influenced by a Terrence Malick-esque camera style. To give them more of a dreamlike quality, those scenes that were taking place in forest campground settings. There were a lot of different types of references we were pulling to really craft something that felt unique. I just thought that was a pretty fascinating look at the thought process behind the cinematography, you know, the thought process behind certain shots in the film. But that is going to do it for this FNAF News video. Like I said, pretty small, but hopefully y'all still enjoyed. There's going to be a lot of very exciting stuff happening very soon. Some stuff that I can't leak to you just yet, but trust me, you're going to enjoy it. So thank you all so, so much for the support. I really, really do appreciate it. And I'll see you all on the flip side. Hope you have a good weekend. Goodbye.